Hello, howdy howdy y'all, it's another Maharaj video, chapter 28, all suffering is born of desire, so, I mean pretty, I mean this take, I mean especially the title, is especially within, I would say, both like the Hindu and Buddhist teachings, I don't know, I just feel like this is just kind of general life stuff, you kind of, do you learn along the way is that, yeah, uh, desire leads to suffering for sure. I mean, there's different types of desires and they, you know, kind of go over that a little bit. I mean, love, I mean, it's kind of, is a different sort of distinction from like a normal desire. And of course, what love is, is, is more than just, you know, you know, like romantic love. Although they do seem to reference that. Uh, Maharaj does talk about that. Um, he even talk, and they even he even talks about sex in this too, which is I've found that really interesting. His uh, perception on sex, actually, um, in fact, that's kind of what they end the the whole chapter on is talking about this. Um, and I'm actually might probably start this by talking about that. Um, yeah, so let's start. Yeah, let's start with that. So. So, the question is, why is there so much suffering in love? Maharaj, all suffering is born of desire. True love is never frustrated. How can the sense of unity be frustrated? How what can be frustrated is the desire for expression. Such desire is of the mind. As with all things mental, frustration is inevitable. Questioner, what is the place of sex in love? Maharaj, love is a state of being. Sex is energy. Love is wise. Sex is blind. Once the true nature of love and sex is understood, there will be no conflict or confusion. Maharaj, there is so much sex without love. No, that's the questioner. Yeah, there is so much sex without love. Maharaj, without love, all is evil. Life itself without love is evil. Questioner, who can make me love? Maharaj, you are love itself when you are not afraid. And so that's how he, like, he ends this entire conversation. That's what like a lot of this stuff um, leads up to, which is very interesting because I haven't really, I don't think I recalled him ever like talking about uh, even sex at all before. So this is a very interesting, his perception on sex. It's not like, he's not like... Uh, puritanical or the seams or anything like that. It just accepts, you know, sex is like this thing. Um, I find it interesting, especially because he talks about, you know, oh, good and evil distinction, why, wherever. But when he says, I mean, this is a good quote. I love this quote. Without love, all is evil. Life itself without love is evil. I mean, that's like, that's like a, oof. <laughs> There's something about that. That's, that's a very heavy hitting quote. Um, so I love that. Um, like I said, this was towards the end. Um, the beginning part of this is interesting too, because his questioner is this guy, and he's, he just says he's from a far off country. I'm assuming maybe like America or Europe or something like that, because he because he if you find out that he's a probation officer. Now, of course, that's, that's another funny side note. I find it interesting that he has to he ex they ends up explaining to uh, Maharaj. What a probation officer is. So I thought that was just a little funny thing that happens. Um, but even after he does that, Maharaj asks him, Must you work? And the question is, Who works? Work happens to take place. Maharaj, Do you need to work? Questioner, I need it for the sake of money. I like it because it puts me in touch with living beings. Maharaj, what do you need them for? Questioner. They may need me, and it is their desires that made me take up this work. It is one life after all. Or no, it is their destinies. Yes, yeah, sorry. They may need me, and it is their destinies that made me take up their work. It is one life after all. And then he asks him how he comes to his present state. He mentions a specific Ram, a, a guy, and a... Uh, and some other guy and 
<laughs> to cover people. And then you get to the... Um, there's another interesting part I really wanted to share. Um, actually, at one point, I found it interesting. Um, the questioner talks about a friend you know, who is having issues with sleep. And Maharaj is just like, a company of, of the truly good Samsung uh, would help him. <laughs> I just found that interesting. And, it's like, and, it's a, and the question is, life itself is a nightmare. Maharaj, noble friendships, Samsung, is the supreme remedy for all ills, physical and mental. Questioner, generally one cannot find such friendship. Maharaj, seek within. Your own self is your best friend. And then I find it, the questioner is, why is life so full of contradictions? Maharaj, it serves to break down mental pride. We must realize how poor and powerless we are. As long as we delude ourselves by what we imagine ourselves to be, to know, to have, to do, we are in a sad plight indeed. Only in complete self-negation is there a chance to discover our real being. So, I think this is like another interesting little, that like example, that part I just shared there. It's just a very good example of how he always gets back to like, you're looking from within and... I mean, ultimately, he probably, you know, ultimately die am and all this. But he's like, he, no matter what, what, how you try to get at him, he's always saying like, well, ultimately, you gotta be looking within. You gotta find these questions, the, the answers to all these questions and solutions. So much of your problems here are from within. Depends on how you look at it. Like, and yeah, like, if your best friend is yourself, that's if that's that's definitely the truth, right? Especially if you believe the universe, you are one with the universe. And everything is the universe. If you believe that, then of course the universe is your best friend. Um, oh, and then I think... Oh, this, this part, and this is another last part here I found, I found really interesting, is that um, the questioner seems to really kind of get a little tangled up about the, the self-negation. How Mal Raj is focusing on, you know, oh... Not focusing on I am this and I am that. You're just kind of negate. You're focusing on the things that, that what the true self is is the negation. You know when you negate all these. You know that I'm this thing and that thing. Blah blah blah. Once you sh you know shed those layers off, there's this you know point that's the real you. Um, the questioner you know asks you know why so much stress and self negation. Maharaj, as much as on self-realization, the false must be abandoned before this real can self can be found. The questioner, the self you choose to call se false is to me most dis distressingly real. It is the only self I know. What you call the real self is a mere concept, a way of speaking, a creature of the mind, an attractive ghost. My daily self is not a beauty. I admit but it is my own and my only self. You say I am or have another self. Do you see it? Is it a reality to you? Or do you want me to believe what you yourself don't see? <laughs> he's, he's like, he's getting like, ah, nah, nah. And like you get there like, man, it was like, calm down. Maharaj, don't jump to conclusions rashly. So like right off, he's like, don't, don't jump to conclusions. The concrete need not be the real. The, con the conceived need not be false. Perceptions based on sensations and shaped by memory imply a perceiver whose nature you never care to examine. Give it your full attention. Examine it with loving care and you will discover heights, depths, and depths of being which you did not dream of engrossed as you are in your puny image of yourself. So, yeah, that and pretty much almost comes pretty much back around with the chapter anyways, because we're pretty much almost pretty much right back up to the end, which I had started with in this video. So, yeah, I think I'll end it there. And like I said, that I found that very interesting and how he just kind of he was like, when people bark at him, he can bark back. And be like, oh, man, oh, man. you know, so. I say I think I'm looking to say this is another chapter, another you know, uh, 
hit on the nail, as I said, and because I feel like I say each of these chapters is a hit, and then it's just you know further, further, get into that point. Because for me, this process, I mean, this had some, it's had some very you know moments of you know like whoa, big, you know, have some whoa moments. But other than that, for me, this spiritual path's been a pretty gradual one with some, like I said, with some hills and cliffs and stuff like that every so often, but mostly pretty gradual. And, uh, this is, this book is just, you know, kind of boop, 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 helping that process truck along. Um, it's a good chapter. Um, good title because it's a very true thing. All suffering is born of desire. And so I hope you all have a good one. I'll see you all next time. Peace.